Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at setting up the navigation and links for a website. So in our example of the photography website, we met with the client and have drafted out the layout and structure of the website. So we've mocked up the home page and the client is going to be giving us their logo and then we're going to have links to these other pages. Now this is going to be the home page and it's going to be called galleries. So rather than calling it home, we're going to call it galleries. And there are going to be links on here to the galleries for each of the other types of photos that she does. And then we'll have links to other pages where they can get information on pricing and specials and, and things of that nature. So we started out with finding out what the client needs in their website and mocked up a basic layout for their approval. So a little bit more detailed layout for our graphic is an example of what the gallery page or the home page is going to look like. So they're going to be providing us with the images that we'll be able to use as buttons for the user to tap on in order to go to those particular gallery pages. And in a later video, we'll look at how to create a gallery. We'll also look at how to add these images in a separate video as well. But as I said, right now we're going to be looking at setting up the main structure for the navigation. Navigation is a very important piece of creating a website, so it's important that you design that in advance before you even start coding. So we know that all of the pages in our website are going to contain this navigation. So we're going to have what's called a universal navigation bar. So we're going to focus on creating this navigation structure at the top to begin with. Now before I begin coding, I do have a layout of this page that shows the names of the files that we'll be using. So you can see here that the logo is going to be logo.png and I've already determined what I want to call my HTML files. And this will be important to know because when we're going to code a link, we need to know the target. We need to know the, the name of the page that it's going to go to. So I pretty much just took the names of each of the links and named them a dot, that with a dot HTML. Except galleries. Galleries is the home page and a meet Devin is all running together. Remember with your file names you want to avoid using spaces in them. If you decide to use capital letters remember that you do have to stay consistent when you're using the name of that file with capital letters in your coding. I also have the images that we will be using for these images on the home page as well. So I know that I have everything together in order to start coding. So we'll be creating each of these HTML pages in this upcoming video demonstration. So next what we're going to do is to begin coding our pages. And the content that is currently in the index page is really for the Meet Devon page. So what I'm going to do is in my text editor, I'm just going to save this as the meetdevin.html page. So I'm just going to do file and save as. And instead of index, I'm going to call it meetdevin.html. And I'll click save. So now our page is called Meet Devin. And I want to close this and I want to come back and open up my index page. From my editor, I'm going to do file and open. And then I'm going to choose the index.html file. So it should look identical to the one that we just saved as Meet Devon. And what I'm going to do is just delete the content that's out of here so that we just have the plain template of an HTML5 document again. So if I save this and then I refresh my browser, you'll see that we have an empty document now. So one of the first things we wanted to do was to set up the navigation area. 
So what I'm going to do is inside the body tag, I'm going to add the tag for an image. Now I'm just going to do a basic tag. We will look at images more in depth in a separate video. So this is just a quick intro to adding a tag for an image. So I'm just going to put in the less than symbol IMG space SRC, which is short for source, equals, and then inside double quotes, the exact file name of the image that you want to add. It's also considered good form to include what's called the alt tag for alternate text. And this is included for screen readers so that visually impaired users will have this information read to them so they have an understanding of what the visual content was supposed to be. So I'm just going to say Devin Ann Photography Logo. So now if I save my file and then refresh it in my browser, if everything works okay, I should see the image here. Next, we wanted a series of navigation links. Next, we're going to create links to the different pages. So I'm going to press Enter, and on this next line, I'm going to start just by making a list of the pages that we're linking to. So gallery is the first one, and then pricing, specials, blog, meet Devin, reviews, and contact. So what we would like is for each of these to be linked to some HTML pages. So to link a word, we use an anchor tag. So before the word gallery, right, I want this to link to the index page, which is the page that we're on. But what we'll do is create this, and then we can copy and paste it or reuse the same code in other pages. So I'm going to go ahead and create a link to index, even though it's linking back to itself. So we use an anchor tag, and it's an A for anchor. And then we put in href, H-R-E-F, for a hyperlink reference. And that equals, and then inside double quotes, the page that we want to link to. So in this case, it's index.html. So this is the opening anchor tag, and it takes an attribute of href for hyperlink reference, and then the page that we want to link to. Then we put a closing anchor tag at the end of the text that should be linked. So now everything between this opening and closing anchor tag is going to be linked to index.html. So if I save this and then refresh it in the browser, you're going to see gallery over here is linked. So next I'm going to link the rest of these in the same way, ahref equals, and from the structure that we saw before, we knew the file that we're going to create is called pricing.html, and then at the end of this, slash a will end the link. So I'm going to go ahead and continue adding the href anchor tags for linking the rest of these to their respective web pages. Okay, so I've gone through and linked the rest of these pages out, and you can see that they each have their respective names with .html as part of the attribute. So if I refresh this in the browser, then these are all linked. Now, some of them won't work because we don't have the pricing page set up yet. But the Meet Devon link should work because that was what we initially created. So I'm going to choose that, and you can see that, yes, it did work to take us to the Meet Devon HTML page. So now, if we take a look, you can see that the image is here, and then we have the text running on the same line as the image, so it comes one right after the other. And that's how an image, by default, will be displayed on a web page. So this is actually going in just like any other character that you might be typing in. So let's look at a little bit of formatting so that we can adjust this a little bit. So first of all, what I'm doing, going to do is I'm going to take these links and we're going to put them into an element called the nav element. 
Now this is something new with HTML5. We can designate this certain area that has our navigation as a nav element. And this is called marking up the page using semantic structural elements. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're marking it up using a tag. This is an HTML5 tag. And it is semantic, meaning it's describing the content of what's inside the tag. So the content of what's in here just happens to be our navigation menu. We can also use this for helping us with formatting and laying out our design. So by adding these tags, these are again called block elements. So what it wants to do is it wants to put everything between the open and closing nav tag into its own block. So when I save this and then I refresh the page in the browser, you should see that these move down into their own line space. Right, so this is creating its own block around here. And now we can do some formatting with this nav element, just like we've already done some things with body and heading one and heading two. We can format the nav section using some CSS style properties. So a little more formatting here. Let's say font size large. So if I close that and we save, then we'll watch the difference in the default size versus large, okay? And inside this same rule, we'll add on something else. Now I can continue typing in my style properties here. Uh, they can extend across like this, so I can say background color. So now I'll save and then refresh again, and we'll see this background color. Now you can actually see the nav section, the nav division in here, because it has a green background. You can also structure your CSS and put these elements on different lines. So like we did with body up here, having these on different lines. That's my preferred way of dealing with it because it makes it easier for me to just go right down the list and see everything that's formatting that element. But you'll work out your own preferences. The area here you can see between the text and the green background is very tight. So what I'm going to do is add some padding to it. So let's say padding, and this will be all the way around. Uh, we'll say 10 pixels. 72 pixels is about an inch on a screen. So this is just going to add a little bit of padding space around it. Now the text in here is pretty close together and there are some different techniques for dealing with that. What I'm going to do here is in my text I'm just going to put a square bracket and a space and a space and a square bracket so that this will kind of open it up a little bit. Just a simple way of creating a text navigation area. Okay so I've added my brackets around my text in here so I'm going to save and then we'll refresh over here. Now we've got too much space going on. And you can also see the space in between here. We get rid of these so that we don't have the lines in between because it is actually creating a link on that empty space there. Let's see if that looks better. Okay, it does look better. And the other option would be to move this the square bracket in the space to before the anchor tag, as well as the space and the square bracket to after the anchor tag. And let me just save that and then you can compare to what happens over here. So watch with gallery and you'll see this, the way that this underline here with this space goes away. Okay, because now the square bracket and the space are outside of the anchor tags and so that's what's creating the link in there. So I think I like that better. It's a little cleaner looking. So I'm going to revise these so that they all look that way. Okay, so I've updated the links so that the brackets and the spaces are outside of the anchor tags. So let me save that and then come back over here 
and we'll refresh it and these do look much cleaner. Now I think that the spacing on here is a little too wide. So I think 20% for the left and right margins is a little bit too, too big. So I'm going to bring them down to 10%. So remember this is inside the body tag. So this is going to affect the entire body of the document. So that should widen things up a little bit. Now a common thing that people like to be able to control is centering some things. I'm not a big fan of centering things on web pages. So if we wanted to center the text that was inside our navigation area, so in the style, I'm going to add inside the nav, I'm going to say text align and we'll say center. So now when I refresh my page, my navigation area is centered within the left and right margins of the navigation section. Another common thing is you want to change the links. You can see here that we have two different color links. We've got a blue link and then a purple link. And the default on your web page is an unvisited link is blue and a visited link is purple. Not always the best colors for maybe your website design, so we do have some control over that. And you would need to come up with colors that you plan to use for some of the different link states. Right now we'll look at visited and unvisited. In our CSS, we have a way to define the links. So this is a colon link. And then inside the curly braces, we define our style. And I'm just going to say color, say pound sign 996600. Now if I save and then refresh, we should see the color of our unvisited links, these blue ones, change. All right, so now we sort of have a brownish orange color in there. And in the same way, we can change the visited link color, and that is A colon visited. I think for that color, for right now, I'm just going to change that to white. Now I could use the pound sign, all Fs for white, or I could just type in white, which is one of the defined colors. So let me save and then we'll refresh this. So now we have our unvisited and visited link colors. And while we're over here, let me just mention um, this pound sign FFF is one of the shorthand ways of writing out something that is a bit longer. So if we had FFF, the first two represent red color values, the second two represent green, and then the last two represent blue values. So RGB, red, green, blue. So when you have repeated values in here, you can shorten it out by removing the repeated one. So in this case, since all three of these are Fs, we can remove each of those. The same thing here, this 9C3 is the same thing as the one right below it, 99CC33. So just recognize that that is a way of writing a shorthand value. When you see one, that means that there should be two there for the different color values. So that's the basics of creating a text navigation area and we set it up using the HTML5 nav element and then we were able to incorporate that into our style design using CSS formatting for it.